Guys, Richard at Riding Zoom here doing my latest review uh, from Night Shed. This one is for. Uh, they light the top, getting in the way of it. But yeah, so for the fourth Harry Potter book, The Goblet of Fire. So again, like the last one, it's going to mention the film a little bit. It can't really be helps, but uh, mainly be. Yeah, really lights. Uh, focus just on the book. So, on to it then. So yeah, everyone knows what happens. Uh, you know, Harry's at the Dursleys again. This time he's a uh, scar, so that's causing massive pain because as it's. Uh, Right before that, Voldemort and uh, Wormtail are like murdering some isn't an old man who just happens to hear them talking about what they're planning to do. <clears throat> um, bit different from the film, so as there's in the film basically there's a third person with them and there isn't in here, <laughs> um, which is uh, yeah a good thing, but it could have worked just as well. So I don't ever get a person's name to spoil what comes later. Um, but yeah, it's basically how his scar starts hurting when Voldemort is feeling particularly angry or murderous or committing murder. Um, so yeah, but plot is basically Harry returns to school. Quidditch has been cancelled because there's a Tri-Wizard tournament where like people, it's basically a big, uh, big challenge, like really tough three stages, like full of really difficult challenges to get through. Um, for example, get through like a haunted maze and it's only open to 17 and above. People, Fred and George, try to get in and get turned into old men. Their spell to break it doesn't work. Um, and basically, yeah, you've got uh, two other schools, um, Faux Buxton's and Durmstrang. So you get your two characters from there, Victor Crumb, the uh, world famous Quidditch, Bulgaria <laughs> Quidditch player who's somehow only uh, 17 or 18. And... Um, Fleur Delacour, who is a Vila, like basically like a siren, like most beautiful words than ever, with like man, you know magical powers that like lures men over, which like Ron gets a full dose of it and does something very dumb um, later. And then Cedric, someone from Hogwarts, just good for finally getting some attention. And then Harry gets like gets his name called out, and the, basically the rules are, you know, whoever the, the uh, whoever it calls out must enter as a contract. And Harry, a fourteen-year-old who so he just begun his fourth year at this point is uh, forced to do this really difficult challenge. Um, obviously, yeah, a lot of people get mad. Ron is kind of funny snaps. He's tired of being like in Harry's shadow. And then he does this. Everyone's convinced Harry's like found a way to put his own name in or had someone else do it for him. Not my ferret quill's just going a bit tension seeky. <laughs> yes, no dinner yet, boy. <clears throat> um, so yeah, it's basically how he has to learn how to do these spells, how he basically by extreme luck gets through them. Like he has no idea how he's gonna defeat a dragon when Hagrid basically secretly shows him what the first challenge will involve, and then someone gives him a tip about using his strength, such as his uh, flying. Second one, how he basically has no idea. He does doesn't you know any like preparing for it to happen. And, and some a Dobby has to tell him like the day of the event, how he's gonna survive, like he's gonna breathe underwater. And then part three is the um, maze where he's got to get through all sorts of challenges, you know, Bogart's going to lose everything and it's the only one Harry actually bothers to prepare for and actually feels like he can like pass it, which he does. But um, yeah, there's uh, Harry's basically always meant to win because the cup, for the, you know, the winner, the winner, the winner has to grab, ends up, you know, it's bewitched into a porky, ends up sending him to the graveyard where he becomes part of Voldemort's return. Voldemort, uh, it's this ritual. Uh, involves Harry's blood in order to break the uh, magical defence he's got um, so that no spell will bounce back off of him again like it did before and yeah Voldemort comes back to life Harry gets away tells Dumbledore and um, that's pretty much it so yeah this is a really good one anyone who's uh, watched it will be, uh, very much agree although three felt more grown up what Harry Potter could be four doesn't feel like a children's uh, story film especially but yeah same in the book um, there's a really really good things that happen like the, the bit with the dragon is just extremely awesome because then you see you've got to get that gold egg from like the dragon and of course there's four dragons and actually harry's is the most dangerous one you know they all come, everyone comes up with own ideas like um is it crumb victor crumb basically puts you know lands a spell on dragon's eye to stun it so he can then just grab, grab the egg it's stuff like that see so their ways um you know harry's uh eats gillyweed on dobby's suggestion in order to breathe underwater and he has to basically rescue someone he cares about. Um, the other champions have all got to do the same thing. Harry shows like good uh, sportsmanship and saves Fleur's sister. He, Harry like kind of like believes the siren song, which you know what they love will be lost forever, and uh, ends up to Fleur's spell of Breathing Waters fails. He uh, ends up saving sisters to get like extra points. And yeah, the ending. Um, him and Cedric make it through basically. Yeah, Victor Crumb gets. Uh, put under the Imperious Curse and is like tries to attack Cedric. Harry manages to knock him out. 
and well Fleur's been uh, taken down already so yeah Harry and Cedric both get to the great get to the cup but they just got decided to touch at the same time since they've kind of worked together even though Harry was a bit bitter over Cedric because Cedric asked a girl Harry liked out to the uh, dance. They'll have to go to a big dance on Christmas Day. Um, oh yeah, 14 year old. I wasn't 14 when I was reading this book, but it reminded me of those days, all right? Yeah, Harry gets annoyed that little girl he, he likes. Cho has gone with Cedric and doesn't believe listen to Cedric's advice, advice about going under, you know, taking the egg for a bath with you. Um, but yeah, you know, oh, that's forgotten. It's, um, and yeah, and of course, it's just, it's just so damn cruel when they get teleported. Voldemort doesn't want both people around and has Wormtail murder Cedric. It's just really cruel. And yeah, in the book especially, it's nasty, it's nasty as hell then, of course. Now, so they tie Harry to a tree, take his blood, do other things. Like they take like one of the bones of Voldemort's father, throw what Voldemort is now, some sort of horrific baby creature, into like, this cauldron. Uh, Voldemort, you know, get, is reborn, brings his, summons his death eaters to him. Of course, Lucius Malfoy is one of them. Um, well, there's lots of the Death Eaters not there. Several have like died in like service to him, as in turned they'd rather die than go to Azkaban. Several are still in Azkaban, and um, yeah, Voldemort plans to kill all the ones who uh, have not been faithful to him in any way, like the ones who claim they were like under his spell the whole time. Um, yeah, those people are like in trouble. Voldemort doesn't show any mercy not to his own followers if they've disappointed him. Um, you know, he's in Lucius Malfoy is safe is because he's basically. It, he more or less says, yeah, he's been getting the ministry ready for his return. Severus Snape, who used to be a Death Eater, perhaps he's uh, getting the school ready for Voldemort's return. Who knows? Um, so, yeah, the the uh, graveyard stuff is, like, amazing. And in the beginning, when the old man is murdered by Voldemort, um, in the film, he basically just says, yo, come in, and then just blasts him. In this, he, like, yo, the UI like, shows a lot of bravery. Voldemort even seems, like, impressed slash amused by it. He's actually willing to talk. He's like, yo, the man's like, yo, he looks at him for where he's, like, hit out of view. He's like, yo, face me like a man. He's like, I'm no man, muggle. I am much, much more, but okay, why not? And then, they'll blast him. Um, so, yeah, I did like that. And then at the end, when um, Harry and Voldemort's wands meet, and, you know, Voldemort challenges Harry to a duel just to, like, kill him you know, in a mockery of uh, the duel, of uh, Dumbledore's, like, training of duelling. Um, you know, Harry only ever duelled once in year two, and he knows one spell, which is going to do no good whatsoever. But, yeah, Harry decides not to, like, give Voldemort the satisfaction and, like, seeing him beg away thing, and he just decides to die bravely. But because they've both got these... Um, they Both their wands have got the phoenix... Um, tail feather in there Dumbledore's phoenix as well which is quite cool um it causes spells to like meet and not to work and it causes all of Voldemort's recent victims and it's, um well most recent ones but you just, you see more but this, the uh Harry basically breaks connection before more show up because obviously we have a hell of a lot of big people almost murdered um yeah they see all their ghosts come out and they basically save Harry you know Cedric you know comes out asks how to take his body back which he does and yeah it's just so sad and I think the film does an even better job of it because yeah Daniel Radcliffe just nails the hell out of it. Yeah, his acting is phenomenal. Like, you know, the terror of like, the situation he's in. And then when he's like back off all safe and like, he's just like crying over Cedric's body and it's, it all like, hits him hard. He's safe, but he's just, you know, scarred badly by this. Um, and yeah, that's just so, so I love that bit. Um, you know, the whole graveyard onwards is great. There's so much stuff that, I mean, stuff like that works so well in film because, you know, you're seeing how an actor has to sell, like being this terrified 14 year old. You don't really get that in the page. But then there's stuff they cut from here, which I don't get why they did. Um, you've got well, the, the uh, maze, for example. In the fine but right in the film, it's basically just dark, misty. Crumb is immediately bewitched. You hear Fleur scream as he attacks her. And you know, like a hedge maze kind of... Yeah, so he then goes to Cedric, who I'm pretty sure I remember like, how he helps knock him back. And um, then it's just kind of like vines coming through the ground and trees at them. They both run, kind of like fight to have three flee, but then when they get to the cup, they decide to take it together. In this, you see all sorts of things. Harry's been like warned, he'll have to face all the spells and jinxes he's been learning. He uses them all. So yeah, it's a real shame they cut all that stuff down. Also, um, the whole house elves thing, Hermione discovers house elves have basically got no rights. They don't get paid, they don't ask for pay. They're basically treated like slaves. Was that phrase from the Doctor episode um, with... Uh, Sorry, Peck. Well, is a slave a slave if he doesn't know he's been enslaved? Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm going to get a great argument. I'm only going to get a yes. <laughs> and yeah, Hermione's got that attitude. Like, the hell's elves. They're not asking for money. They don't seem to want it. They just live to serve. And she thinks it's like slavery and like 
sets up this society for you know, protection of um, elves, what's it? Society for protection of elvis, elvish workforce, something like that. And yeah, no, no one really interested, not even like... The, you know, the kind of ones like Hagrid, because they, they, the elves like this. You know, Dobby is an exception to the rule. The elves you know, aren't impressed by him uh, going around, uh, you know, living his life free, even willing to work for money. And I feel it's just in the corner, but I watch him. They uh, have the habit of using corners for toilets. What are you doing there, Quill? What are you doing? <laughs> so watch him there. I'll get him in shots. Ah, and this old camera. Are you there? Oh, yeah, there he is. I see him now. Yeah, right. Oh. Hey, there you go. Are you on TV, Quill? Um. Oh, where was I? So, yeah, that's unfortunately something they just scrapped completely in the film, which is a shame because it's a good little subplot and it ties into a major moment in uh, Seven, which the film I thought yeah, completely screwed up. Um, so, yeah, you got like the school dance, which of course is meant to terrify any 14 year olds. Um, you got like Hermione's with Victor Crumb, which is like shockingly <laughs> like amazing because it's like, yeah, basically a beauty in the beast sort of thing, um, as people would say, you know, well. well Bet Hermione as well, and also would play Bell <laughs> several many years later. Um, but yeah, the idea that Hermione is considered really plain and average is like we're the uh, you know best looking like male in the school, um, and like well famous sports player at the same time. Ron is just see like seething jealousy. They makes up all these excuses. Uh, you know, claim that you know, he shouldn't be she shouldn't be do, have, you know, hanging out with someone who's uh, from the school because he's actually Harry's enemy for the challenge it's all so stupid and uh, yeah Harry's Miss Walker's girl he likes has been asked by someone else um and yeah uh, Harry gets a couple days from him on but neither of them are really interested and both girls ditch them which you know fair play <laughs> uh, he deserved it and um so yeah that's basically it uh Harry's also like uh, for that topic Harry's also like contacting Sirius now you know he Sirius started to write to him and you really get a feeling how much you know Harry is caring for Sirius so viewing him as you know he's his godfather as like the next best thing after his actual dad um which is pretty cool Sirius is like he's been in contact with Dumbledore the whole time there's a great bit at the end when everything is exposed you know Mad-Eye Moody which is a superb one-off character he's like the famous author who's caught many many dark wizards and there's like no uh no sympathy for any like villain whatsoever. There's a hilarious bit when in the film as well. Draco does the fans to attack Harry when his back is turned. Uh, Mad Eye sees him and turns Draco into a ferret. And let's get my ferret in view. Hey, little boy. Hey, little. Come on, up, up. See, Draco ferret though is like pure white, like the albino one with white and red eyes. This one's a bit more like mixture of colours. You're a good Mr. Ferret, aren't you? Yeah, yo. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, so that's great. You know, decides to discipline Draco via turning him into a transfiguring him into an animal. Draco with his pale blonde hair and a thin build. Ferret is the perfect animal to turn him into. And, agree. and of course, in the film, they get the ferret noises wrong. Because they say, why is it with all these films? They put ferrets in and the sounds are like wrong. Ferrets have a sound that's cross, cross more like with a large chipmunk and Dr. Zoidberg. <laughs> and they never sound like that in films, so it's obviously insane. Um, and here comes my other one. Hello, Rocket. He's more the traditional brown ferret. Um, but yeah, so they've got that going. Um, good to see ferrets, but again, the sound's always wrong for some reason. Um, so that's got, uh, again, that's just a great scene. But yeah, Mood, Mad Eye Moody is not really him. It's actually Barty Crouch Jr., the Minister of Magic's uh, son, who's been in Azkaban the whole time, claiming his innocence, or maybe he was and he got driven insane and turned to Dark Side World in Azkaban, or he was, or he was just lying the whole time. But yeah, he's easily Voldemort's most faithful supporter. Voldemort says it himself, and yeah, he basically sets the whole thing up. You know, kidnaps Mad-Eye Moody, you know, takes Apologies Potion to turn himself into him. It's because he drinks from Hip Flask, which is that potion. Mad-Eye Moody's basically been imprisoned, trapped in this giant, like, box, like a TARDIS, big on the inside, for 10 months by the end. And um, I get the feeling that the Polyjuice Potion also gives you the mannerisms, but you can't actually just be like impersonating Mad Eye by just having like researched him. It feels like he's really got his, like, he's got his personality, such as you know, transfiguring Draco from halfway into a ferret, teaching the uh, forbidden curses, something the schools don't normally do, but he feels, you know, you've got to learn. I feel like, yeah, this is, if it was really Mad Eye Moody, he would have done all these things. Um, so yeah, he's absolutely great. Again, one-off Defence Against Dark Arts teacher. No one will ever do that post for more than a year, it seems. Um, 
And what else is a big thing that happens in this? I felt like I, my Alex Cross and I just kind of ended, like, for example, I didn't even mention Christine being kidnapped at the end. Um, so yeah, I don't want to do that again. So the other major thing, this year, oh, it's just my head and now it's gone. What was it? It was, ha, I'm doing that voice. Yeah, in the film, David Tennant, you know, plays Barty Crouch Jr. And yeah, he's got the the, uh, the doctor voice going. It's great. It's, uh, you know, David Tennant is Scottish and sounds Scottish, but uh, for the, playing the doctor and uh, other roles as well, he's asked to sound more English, you know, Queen's English, King's English. And he's got the same thing going here, exactly like he does in the show Jessica Jones as well, you know. I'll be welcome back a hero, and he's just so like deranged, and he just yeah, it's like the most if the, if like the Doctor was like a cartoony like madman. That's kind of how he plays him. Um, what year would this come out in? I think it was two thousand and five. Was the book? No, the book can't be in two thousand and five. Let's have a look. See, this is why physical media must never die because you can't just skim to the chapter so easily. Ah, oh, there we go. Two thousand, yeah. Pretty sure it's 05, and of course he started in Doctor Who in um, 06, but appeared Christmas 05 and Children Need Specials. So technically 05, he appeared in Doctor Who for the first time. So yeah, it's good to have him there. And speaking of Dave Tennant, I'm currently watching The Ahsoka Show, and he voices one of the droids, which is just absolutely awesome. You see Dave Tennant in the credits, you're like, well, where is he? <laughs> yeah, he's just there doing a, doing a voice. Um, oh, God, it's gone from my head. Head. What was it? So yeah, Christmas is the ball. Mad Eye Moody's new dark arts teacher. Sirius is like hanging around. Oh yes, um, him and Snape are basically dumb orders them to get along. Um, yep, he's uh, had, you know, been in contact with Sirius this whole time. You know, living in a cave outside Hogwarts. Um, it's not just Harry Sirius was talking to. So yeah, basically, uh, now that Voldemort's back, they basically need to get along and you know be united. And yeah, they uh, he basically says Severus. Serious, shake hands, and they both do it like let like shake them instantly. Let go of their, like hatred for each other is there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, good. Yet yeah, more than Severus Snape being in complete uh, pain to everybody, but not as bad as other times it seems. But still pretty terrible. Um, yep, you see that Neville. Um, you know when Mad Eyes didn't teach him about the curses. Um, Neville actually, but put his hand up first to one of them, surprisingly. He knows exactly what the Cruciatus curse is. When you use Crucio and you torture people, it says like his parents were tortured to complete insanity by the Death Eaters. And uh, yeah, you see him like visibly react when uh, Mad Eye is practicing it on a spider. And uh, yeah, so quite sad to see. You know, Harry, Nev Harry has no family. Um, but yeah, Neville did. And then when he was very young, they were you know, as good as killed. It's uh, pretty terrible. Um, so yeah, Neville easily has it worse than Harry. Harry never knew his parents. Neville, Neville did. We don't know what age they were like tortured, but Neville's probably you know five, six or so when it happened. Um, I'm sure there's something else about this film that I've just forgotten. Oh yeah, Hagrid is a half giant. He uh, you know tries to you know he takes a liking to the woman who's in charge of the uh, basic the Dern uh, Strangle uh, boat box the ones with the girls, the Vila and the others. Um, and yeah, the one who's in charge, she is clearly half giant as well. Hag she takes massive offence to Hagrid talking about that. Um, but yeah, it's fun to see him just trying to make an effort. Like he's brushed his hair down, although it doesn't look like he's got gel in there. It's got a really awful suit. It's uh, pretty good. Uh, whatever else it was, I was thinking, oh, it's clearly gone from my head, so I'll just leave it there. So yeah, really good one. Loads of action. Film is great, but as much as I like three, three's always been my favourite, even though they started cutting a lot of stuff out. It didn't harm it too much. Four, I think it does. It's like, and I just, it feels like they're rushed. Oh, got it. Quidditch World Cup. So yeah, where the Death Eaters show up at the beginning. Yeah, it's Quidditch World Cup. It's like massively luxurious. Um, Ireland v Bulgaria. And like, you got their, um, like you got their mascots. Like you got leprechauns making fake gold. Um, you've got the, uh, like the velas basically hypnotizing <laughs> all the uh, male Quidditch players. Oh, uh, male, oh, well, yeah, just really it won't work on the might work on the women as well, but the Quidditch players for the other team. Um, it's just a really spectacular event and it just looks so so cool. And loads of time is dedicated to it in the in the film. There's no oh, and the Weasleys uh show up by um chimney travel <laughs> and they end up going through the Dursleys boarded up ch um, chimney place. And yeah, Fred and George naturally 
take uh, to decide to uh, play a prank on Dudley by giving him a certain toffee because Dudley's forced to diet so they know he'll uh, eat up the first sweet he finds. Oh, and at the end, Harry, with his winnings from the Quidditch World, uh, from the uh, Triwizard Tournament, gives all the money away. You know, he firstly tries to give it to Cedric's family, but they don't want it because they're just so grateful he's brought Cedric's body back and they certainly don't blame him for what happened. Um, as Dumbledore does tell everyone what happened, even the Ministry don't believe it and pretty kill the evidence. Um, but yeah, Harry doesn't want it at all, and he basically gives it to Fred and George because they've got plans to open a sweet shop, a joke shop that need a lot more money to do it. And of course, the Weasley don't don't have much money, and um, yeah, they usually get cheated out <laughs> their winnings at, a, at the World Cup, which they bet on successfully. And yeah, Harry basically says, "Yo, you have this. Take it, or I'll throw it down the drain." Because yeah, Harry doesn't need it. All his money, his parents' had has been left to him. And, yeah, he's got like there's like thousands of galleons. It's probably like tens of thousands of pounds um but yeah he just gives it to Fred and George and yeah spoiler they'll start putting that money to good use uh you don't see in the film though which really sucks because yeah suddenly Fred and George are like rich in like five or six like where's this money come from they're like yeah Harry is that like their financial backer but yeah so it's nice that Harry does that he gives them all like all the money that because they all put it to good use so so yeah that's it then so wow for a minute so really good book um Good film, but I feel like it's the first one they start cutting way, way too much. House Elves, you know, the Dursleys again, even if they wanted to a break from it, but there is a reason why Dudley has, uh, well, Harry has to stay there, even if he doesn't want to. Unless, or he could have, or stay with Sirius, but that wasn't possible. Um, yeah, Quidditch World Cup, a bit more, you know, House Elves stuff, seeing more what Dobby's getting up to. Um, you know, a bit more Voldemort's victims, um, what Wormtail did, like they kidnapped a witch and then murdered a witch and then murdered her called Borfa Jerkins, um, or, or Jonkins. But yeah, her ghost appears as well. There's still only, not just more exposition, but just loads of scenes that I feel like it really needed, which, yeah, they just should never have cut out. Um, but yeah, what can you do? It's the first one to really begin doing that to its effect. But yeah, overall though, that doesn't matter with the film. You can still enjoy the book. Obviously, like I said, certain things are better in visually, such as like the how, yeah, how terrified Harry is in the, everything in the graveyard and after. Um, but yeah, you, there's just so much in, more in here. And yeah, it's only going to keep keep getting bigger. This is big at 600 pages. Book eight is more like uh, book eight. Book five is more like 800 pages. So yeah, not on that one yet. But I will be on basically saving for my holiday, which I think. A lot of travelling time for America is going to come in very handy. So yeah, really good book. Definitely recommended. And these books aren't hard to get. So everyone who's not read them, could happen. I hadn't read these until the late 2000s. So yeah, good story. Oh, I started them. But yeah, plenty of people haven't, I'm sure. But I'm sure you enjoy it. So yeah, hope you enjoy my very long review. I feel like it's been too long since I've done a fully in-depth review. So why not? Feel free to fast forward, skip. Again, this is all live. I don't do one day maybe. Yo, give me money so I can buy a computer. <laughs> um... If you, like my, if you like my content, give me some cash and I'll provide better content. Um, but yeah, maybe one day I'll do like chapters and all that stuff. But for now, this is just me, 23, 11, 12, 13. And so yeah, it's on now. So hope you enjoyed. Um, been a while since I've, since I've uploaded some previous ones. And next one is going to be my... Uh, I had to read this first because I ended up burning through that book. Yeah, somehow in just over a week. I couldn't believe that happened. Um, but yeah, next book is Wraith Squadron 1 uh, or X-Wing 5 Star Wars. So... Yeah, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you later. Thank you.